Hi and welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today we're going to have a look at the Mantis Q from Unique and this is the X pack. So this is the pack that comes with a case and two, ba two extra batteries, so you get three batteries in total. So before we start this review, I'm going to be reviewing this based on the price I paid for it, not the price that it currently is. I think this is over £600 for this. I bought this the other day, brand spanking new, from eBay from someone for £340. That's what I'm going to review it on at that price. Because there's no way on God's earth is this thing worth that kind of money. So if you've not seen one of these before, you'll, you'll understand why when we go to the video. So, in the case you get, this is how it comes, it comes packed like this directly from the factory. You get the controller, you get the drone, you get the charging brick and the cable you get the cable for the board as well you get a spare set of props you do get a full set you get a full set of props and some new screws so these are the propellers where well, you get two for three sets of props so these are the props sort of DJI-ish but these screw on rather than clip on I think anyway. I'll have a look at that in a minute. So you get two sets of props, set of screws and then you get the three-way charging hub. Now you do get the three-way charging hub even if you buy the one with one battery. So it's a, it's a way to try and encourage you to buy more batteries I think. But it does have a decent flight time anyway. And that's what you get in the case and then in the sides of this case here you have a battery in each side. So these are your batteries So as you can see, these are good, they reckon it's 30 odd minutes flight time, it's more like 24, 25, but it is 24, 25 minutes. And you get three of them, so you've got a lot of flight time with it. And then in the other side, you've just got another battery. So, I'm not quite showing you that one. So let's have a look at the drone first. So this is the drone. So as you can see, it's a folding drone in similar kind of... I don't know which way I want to open these, I think it's this one first, yeah. So you back leg come front leg comes for backwards so the back leg you pull it forward now it's got really nice motors it is quiet this is very quiet I'll tell you that now so it's a nice and quiet drone the props do a good job of keeping the noise down but the motors are very small if you look they're very similar to the motors on the Anafe they don't look much different than that, that type of size anyway I don't know what the KB is on these but they're very very similar now it does have a 4K unstabilised camera. So there's no stabilisation at 4K whatsoever. If you have it at 1080 or 720, 60 frames a second, you then have a electronic stabilised image. So not a gimbal. There's no gimbal on this. All you can do is adjust this up and down with your transmitter and there's something to take the play out. But this is, does not have a gimbal. It's an important thing to realise that when you see the footage of this in part two, you're going to see that you do get shaken and whatever. So that's why I'm telling you it was never worth the £640. It's got two ultrasonics at the back and it's obviously got an optical flow under these as well. The drone is nicely made. I like the, the, the fit and finish of the drone. The arms feel really nice. They're very smooth in operation the way they are. I don't know if you can hear that. Well, they've got like a, ratchet, a very light ratchet mechanism on the back ones. And as you can see, all nicely finished off, got braided cables on the inside, I don't know if you can see that. They're nicely braided off as a cable, so not just cables sticking through. The remote looks very similar to the Parrot and Affy's remote. This is quite a bit smaller than the Parrot and Affy, but it feels fairly similar. Lighter, sticks feel very similar to the Parrot and Affy. And I actually like this remote a lot, but I like the Anafi remote. It has the smallest antennas I've ever seen, but they are real, so there's actually wires inside there. You've got your connection to your phone here, for your USB plugs into the top, and then it's got another connection there for charging. It's then got camera wheel button on this side, and record button, take a picture, and then this wheel you can set to what you want. So before going any further, I'm going to connect this up, but while I'm doing that, 
I've already recorded the video showing you the app, so I've done a quite in-depth look at the app so you can see what the functions are on the app. So let's look at that and in the meantime I'll get this set up. Okay, so let's have a look at the app. On the left hand side of the screen you've got take off and land button. Slide across to confirm it, it will take off even indoors because it's got IPS and it's receiving IPS at the minute and telling me it's got a good signal. You've then got, under that you have your return to home button and then you've got your modes. So you've got journey mode, point of interest and follow me. The follow me mode is put your box around it, it'll follow you. Or you've got watch me, drone will stay where it is and rotate itself to follow you. It will not move the drone but and so if you move further away from the drone you'll be further away in the shot obviously. You then have a point of interest setting so it will fly around a point of interest and then of course you've got journey mode which is a type of thing so it'll fly up and out for an aerial shot so it'll go up in the air and then fly diagonally out to give you a good aerial shot tends to be the typical type of affair you get these days you've then got your map which you can adjust the settings on so you can have it hybrid you can have it street or you can have it like it looks now which is an overhead view on the right hand side of the screen you have at the bottom you have your cached videos if you've got any on your phone which will be local and then drone is what's on your SD, SD card on the drone you've then got your camera settings just above that so in manual mode you can adjust your ISO shutter and your EV value you then have video resolution so 4k 30 frames a second unstabilized 1080p 30 frames a second stabilized 60 frames a second is stabilised and 720, 60 is also stabilised. So you won't get stabilised image obviously at 4K. You've then got your video format, you can change that more to MP4 if you like. You've got your white balance at auto, you've got sunny, cloudy, fluorescent, incandescent and you can lock it. You've then got your metering mode which is centre, average or spot. And then you have your style. You've got natural, saturated and soft. I'd probably leave it at natural to be honest. You've then got your other settings are for your grid, you can turn the grid on and off on the screen. You can have a centre point which will just put a little dot in the middle, little crosshairs. You've then got the histogram which is actually under here, you can't see it at the minute but that's where it puts it. And then you've got automatic recording. So it'll start automatically recording as soon as I start the props up which is probably the way I normally fly. Anti flickers on auto, you can set it to 50 or 60 hertz depending on what you're watching this on. Format SD card and reset your camera settings. So a decent set of menus for the camera. You've then got your settings menu. So you can calibrate your map coordinates. You can choose whether you want a video cache to your phone. You can change metric to imperial. And here's where you check for software updates. You then have your drone settings, which is gives you return to home height, which I've set to 35 meters. Low battery return to home, which I've turned on. So in other words, when the battery gets down to 20%, it will return home. My height limit set at 120 for the UK. LEDs are all turned on and then I can have manual mode or IPS mode. So I can play the manual mode or IPS in other words, turn everything off or just turn off the GPS. On your controller you can adjust what mode you fly in. I fly mode 1 predominantly so I set this to mode 1. And then I can adjust so my left joystick in other words if I click down the joystick I've got a setting at the minute. Mine's set for nothing. You can have select scroll wheel options, turn on and off the front LEDs, toggle map and live screen view or enable and disable voice control. On the right wheel I have mine set for none so I'm just going to change that and change that to my EV settings. So now I can control the EV from uh, the right hand wheel on my transmitter. Top of the screen you have what mode you're in so it currently says IPS. Next to that you have your satellites, it's got eight, it's indoors so it's doing really well. The next one is my signal strength from a transmitter to the drone. The next one is my battery on the transmitter and then finally you've got 94% which is a drone battery. Under there you've got what your ISO is and your EV value etc and then you've got how much storage you've got left on your SD card. And then I can with this button here you can change between photo and video so let me just show you so you can see what it looks like on the, the screen I'm holding this in my hand obviously so, and I'm shaking because I do and uh, it doesn't look bad at all the image quality looks good through the screen 
and also the stabilization doesn't look bad obviously this is in 1086 there but we'll look at that more when we do the flight test on it so that's the app okay so that's the app so as you can see, I showed you in the app that how you set up this wheel so you can have this wheel for your EV value. So on the front of the controller you have a return to home switch and then you have a sport mode. Flick that across, puts the drone into sport mode. Actually it's just got a GPS lock in here which is nice. So you've seen the app but this is it on the phone so I've got a GPS lock now so I could take off. The map works fine as I showed you in the app. So let me just show you this camera. So if you look, this is me moving the wheel, and as you can see, it's not actually really, it's not bad actually, but it's not super smooth. You can see at the side it's gear driven, so it's got a gear at the side of there when you look at one, and that's what it's moving at. And, and to be fair, it could do every finer teeth on, but because the camera's never going to be, the camera isn't the bestest thing in the world anyway. You, you, you might find the camera's better than I think it is. So I'm going to show you, um, now I hovered it for like 20-30 seconds outside because I, I haven't flown it properly, but I hovered it 20 seconds outside. So I'm going to put that down here in the box so you'll see in the box and you're going to get an idea of what it looks like when it's just stood in the air. But there was some wind, it was like 10 miles an hour today when I filmed it. So. I can't tell you what I really think. I need to have a proper fly of it. I've had a quick fly of it and it flies really nice. So as a drone to fly, it flies very, very nice. If you're wondering why I've got flashing lights on the bottom, it's because it's got a problem. Oh, it's gone now, but it was telling me that it's because of all the other drones and stuff that's in here. So as you can see, I've got a new filming place that I'm filming. You're going to see some videos have this. If the film not in here, it's because I've already recorded the videos. Because I've got about 20 that I've already recorded. But from now on, I will be filming in here because the table's bigger and I think it looks better. I've got more room to put bigger drones on. That's why I've lost my GPS. But as you can see, the image, let me just show you the lag. So you can get some kind of idea of the lag. So let me just move the drone at the same time. So you can see the lag's not bad. It's slight. It's got some lag, but it's not bad. So when you connect this up, you don't connect this up and look at it for your Wi-Fi. This just goes straight on the cable. So you put the cable and you open the app, you connect it up. When you've got the drone and this connected up, it can take up to 30 seconds for it to find for the app to connect to this. So it will say RC connected, but here it won't say device connected. If you look there, it says device connected. It won't say that until it's got the app working properly and it make a beep. Once you've done that, it's fine. But it does for the, so don't just think when you connect it up, oh the app ain't working and keep on plugging it, just leave it 30 seconds and it will connect. So all in all, I love the look of it and I've flown it so I know what it flies like. I haven't tried filming with it because either the weather's been really grey, I haven't got time to do it today, I've just had a quick hover in it and the weather is better, but I haven't got the time today to do a, a flight on it. So you're going to get that video coming up shortly. But you're going to see from the image I've showed you what it kind of looks like. I kind of like the I like the style of the drone. I love the controller. I think it flies well. But remember, I'm only basing this on the price of £340 for three batteries and the bag. I'm not basing it on the price of this thing, which is, to me, a crazy price of... Well, I think it's, it's four, is it 450 just for the drone itself? And then... This pack 600 and something pound, which is ludicrous to be honest, considering it's not got a gimbal on. But that's not what I'm reviewing it on. I'm just going to review it on the price I paid, and I wanted to show it. I wanted to get one. I was going to get one when they first came out, and then I saw some videos, and I've been put off and put off and put off. I then saw this; it was a good deal, so I bought it, and that's why we, that's why we're reviewing it now. So, thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. I'll have the flight footage video up in a few days. Once again, thanks a lot.